One of the things that we decided to do pretty early on was to set up our water system. And so we did a quick water assessment on the property and realized that we needed irrigation water and we were also going to need a, a good water system to hydrate the animals that we're going to get, which is going to be probably some dairy cows, some sheep, maybe some goats, we'll see, pigs probably. And so one of the problems that happens on farms is that people will set up um, few watering points and they are either, they come in the form of dugouts or frost-free waterers, which means that the animals are always having to travel back to one or two or three watering points. And so this pipeline that we're setting up right now, Barry's come out to help set it up. He's gonna pull it through the field will allow me to set up our ram pump. We're gonna fill up several tanks on the top of our property here, and then that will feed into this pipeline, which will go all the way down to the bottom of the property, which is somewhere over there. And we'll be able to put multiple watering points in. I'm thinking about 24 probably across the whole property, which will allow me to um, intensively manage our grazing systems, um, moving, our animals in smaller and smaller subdivisions which benefits the grass and it also benefits the animals and allows us to kind of push the boundaries a little bit. So let's go talk to Barry and talk a little bit about his business and the pipe that he puts in and why he does it and kind of wh where his insights came from many years ago when he started doing this. Then from time to time as we're pulling this through I'll, I'll shoot some b-roll so you can kind of see what's going on and as we continue to develop the system then uh, I'll make little videos to show folks how it's all coming together. All right let's go talk to Barry. Okay my name is Barry Irving. I, uh, my wife and I, Judy, have a small company, Pasture Pipeline and we install a surface pipeline or shallow buried pipeline for farmers or ranchers or individuals that want to move water from point A to point B. I got started in pipelines 2002 was a, was a significant drought year in Alberta. I was managing the University of Alberta Kinsella Ranch and we plain all ran out of surface water. We had a few thousand acres with adequate, gra adequate moisture to grow grass but no moisture to fill dugouts and I got tired of what I call digging dirt. Every year I would spend ten or fifteen thousand dollars digging our dugouts deeper only to find out they were two feet less water in them the, the next year. So that year we installed a bunch of pasture pipeline. Uh, we took water to three thousand acres um, for the cost of less than a year's worth of cleaning dugouts and those pipelines are still operating today. So five years ago, my wife and I found a, a pasture plow on, on uh, government surplus. So we drove to Brandon, and, or we bought it and drove to Brandon and picked it up. And we've been doing pasture pipeline ever since. Our typical runs are maybe a mile or two miles, uh, but we have had individuals with up to 10 miles of pipe that they've uh, put for watering cows. Uh, the people who do it really like it because it gets cows out of dugouts keeps their dugouts clean and uh, there is a gain advantage but the biggest advantage to having water is, is you either have water or you don't and if you have water you can do some things and if you don't have water you're pretty limited so the biggest economic gain I believe is just having water to water cows. So uh, when, when people set up pipelines does it improve their uh, pasture management as well? Uh, most people that are doing this are those that are are pushing the intensity level of pasture management. Uh, even, but even even those that are not that intensive pasture management can get an almost immediate improvement because you can move water around. You don't have to have cows waddle and dugouts. You don't have to follow where water goes. You can move it to where you want it. Tell me a little bit about this particular pipe. Uh, this pipe is, uh, there's two grades of, of this black pipe and, and any any pipe like this will work. Uh, I've plowed in pipe, I just, we just finished a job a few days ago for a guy that bought some, uh, some conduit. It's still the same, same type of pipe, it's just a different color. But if you buy a commercial water pipe, it's black pipe and it's rated in DR. So this is DR17, which is rated to uh, 90 pounds, but that means it's good to 120 pounds of pressure, which is lots of pressure for most standard ranchers. If you want to go higher, you can get DR13, DR11, and you're just going up in pressure, pressure capability. Standard municipal pipe is 200 PSI, so it's DR11. 
uh, it's high density and the comparison is if you go to the, a farm store or a co-op chances are you're buying low density pipe and it's more expensive and it's more meant for household use rather than this uh, pasture use and uh, tell me a little bit about its UV properties uh, this stuff has got a uh, UV inhibitor in it that's the one detraction from buying a gas pipe or conduit a yellow or orange pipe if you can pick that up somewhere cheap sometimes is it doesn't have UV inhibitor in it uh, but that if, if you plow it in ie bury it the UV inhibitor doesn't make any difference so this stuff you can lay on the surface and it has a UV inhibitor embedded in the pipe and how long will it last on the surface uh, well I I'm not that old but I think it will last people's lifetime okay. so where can they find out about uh, your website and your company and your services oh we have a little little a little, a little uh, website called pasturepipeline.com all one word pasturepipeline.com and we kind of go through some some sales stuff if you like uh, some benefits and then a little bit on the installation process okay awesome thanks Barry thank you So we're just going to drive down there and meet Barry and he's going to cut the pipe, fuse it a couple times so we'll take a uh, video of that and we'll probably end up putting a few T's in along the way while he's here uh, just so it's easier to tap into it for other irrigation purposes that we've got and then we're going to continue it on down to the bottom pasture. So I'm just parked in the corner now. My wheel's on top of the pipe. Just have a peek here. And we're doing this, let's see if I can get it in the shot. We're doing this to hold the pipe in the corner so that uh, when Barry keeps driving, um, stays in the corner there, follows the fence line. So as we're doing this, I'm just thinking a little bit about kind of how this pipe was made and the fact that it's probably gonna last for 30 or 40 years. And, um, you know, this is a really great use of fossil fuel. It's going to save enormous amounts of labor and time. Um, it's going to allow us to manage these cattle holistically. Um, so they're actually going to be benefiting the pasture. They're going to be sequestering carbon as a result of proper grazing management. Um, they're going to be increasing biodiversity. And so there's a lot of kind of negative um, belief around the use of fossil fuels and I you know I think this is a fantastic use of of fossil fuels and so um, I have no qualms using products that are made from petroleum um, if they're gonna have this kind of long-term return and durability so we're just running the pipe up this field we wanted to basically get rid of as much pipe as we could on the reel before we had to do some of the kind of finickier stuff up at the top which is where we're going to have to do a little bit more hand labor to kind of move things around trees and um, in reality what I should have done was that I should have cleared all of my trees, uh, run my new fence and then had the pipeline come in. Um, so I'm doing this a little bit backwards being totally upfront with that because um, sometimes we make mistakes and it's good for you guys to hear the mistakes that I'm making so that you don't make them as well. I mean, I'd, realistically, it's going to work just fine. I just think it would have been a bit slicker to have done the clearing, fencing, and then water, which is kind of backwards to how we think about it in design, but um, that would have been a better kind of installation process. So we'll get a little bit of video, I think, before he leaves on how his fusion machine works and show you that. And then we'll take a look at the saddles, which is typically how they will plumb 
the water into these lines and then that should wrap up the video. All right, just finished pulling some pipe through the bush by hand. Now we're gonna go fuse a couple joints on so we'll see how that works and then that's it. We've pulled the pipeline and then it's about finishing the rest of the water system. Okay, here we go. So this is the end point and under this cap is a threaded inch fitting. And a, inch and a half male, yep. Yeah. And so we can tie this into a pump at the bottom. And what we're going to do is weld that end to this pipe. When we went to Peru, our uh, travel agent recommended a different kind of bug juice. It's called Benz. Oh yeah. It's really quite nice. It doesn't... Uh, is it still deep though? It still has deed, but it doesn't stink like the other stuff does. Yeah, deed is just horrible shit though. It is. Basically just an insecticide. So is that other unit there just for squaring the end of the pipe? This is, yeah. yeah. So slick. Get right alongside of it, but. So you put on quite a bit of pressure for a few seconds. Yeah. Can you see a bit of a bead develop? Yeah. All the way around. And then no pressure. Yeah. So how long do you have to see that? Okay, there you go. It's about 30. Right, okay. Oh, nice. If you do it too hard, it's called slapping it. Yeah. It pushes all your melted plastic out. Right. And that's called a cold fuse. Uh -huh. And those are the ones that break. Uh -huh. So you push it together slightly and then you just hold it yeah. until it cools. So 30 seconds sort of thing? 30 seconds a minute. I usually go a minute because it's always easier to take a little bit extra time than to do it over. Yeah. So this joint's all welded up now. and see if I can get a picture of it here. Kind of see the joint. And so basically the little unit there melts the plastic and then the metal device pushes it together. Um, it's really cool actually, that little metal device, it actually reams the, the, the uh, plastics to make sure that the joint is perfectly square. So now we'll be able to uh, connect the garbage pump up to this if we have to uh, and fill those tanks up top with um, creek water if we need it, but we're gonna try and run the entire thing off of spring water because we've got these amazing springs. They just, then we can use that water for our irrigating our garden and um, we can use it for hydrating the, the animals. Um, and I think we'll actually drink it in our house as well. So we'll see where it goes. Okay, on to the next joint.
York. Yeah. Uh, what do they have? 14% infection rate? Right. And to get herd immunity, you need seven. Oh, in the 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 So is that a Teflon coating on there then? It is. Yeah, that's why you kind of baby these things. 